Welcome back to the second part of the Style Guide Walkaround. And in this part, we're going to take a look at the TCA record stuff. So stay with me. One of the cool things about the Style Guide extension in Typo 3 is that it will actually show you everything you can do with TCA. So every form in Typo 3's backend is defined by TCA, the Table Configuration Array. And Style Guide has all the tests for it. And it can act as a source of inspiration if you want to do special stuff or just take a look around at what's available. So if we go back to the Help module, click on the Style Guide module, we can then go to TCA Records. And what it will actually do for you if you create a Style Guide page tree including data is that it will run for a couple of seconds and it will create another hidden page tree underneath your existing page tree. Or if you don't have an existing page tree, it'll just create the first page tree with a couple of records in that. So it's done with that now. So if we go to the list module, we can now see that below our introduction page, we now have the Style Guide TCA demo. And what you can see, there's a lot of pages in here. And we can basically hit the Elements Basic page right here. And then you can see that there's a Form Engine Basic Element record right here. These basically just have their title set to the, to the UID because it's, it's a demo, all right? Um, but you can see that there's a couple of more versions in different languages. And if we open this up, this will be a lot of stuff. And I'm going to hide the other modules right here. You can see that there's a couple of tabs on top and you can see everything you can build with TCA. The naming is very technical. It just says input one through, I don't know, let's scroll down, input 37. Um, these are not necessarily in order. Um, they're in order of being added to Form Engine. So whenever we add a new functionality to Typo 3's core, you can then see these things reflected in Style Guide. And these are grouped together logically, not alphabetically, <laughs> basically. So what you can see is the different kind of things that you can do with input fields, for example. Um, most of the stuff you will most likely know all the evaluations that you can put onto form engine fields are tested here as well. Um, because fun fact, we use it in Typo 3 score to test new <laughs> functionality. Um, and if we scroll down a bit, there might be a couple of things that you might not know that are there yet. So um, special stuff like the link wizard is new. Um, there's the possibility to add sliders to a form if that's your bill. Um, there's a value picker where you can basically select a value and it'll be immediately added over to the left-hand side. Although it's not a database relation, so um, this is just for speeding up the process of selecting things. Um, you can append stuff to a field. You can prepend stuff. There's the color picker. There's a color picker with fixed values. Um, okay, picking the orange while it's already orange doesn't make sense, but as you can see, if I pick the blue or the red, it will immediately apply to this field. So very, very helpful features. Next up are all the permutations of uh, date-time fields that we have in Typo 3's core. So you can basically pick whatever style you like. You see, it's, it's not that many as, as, as with the normal input fields, but it's still quite a lot of things that you can do. So just dates, dates and date times, just time. This is all stuff that Typo 3 supports out of the box right away. And you should make use of these things to make the life of your editors as easy as possible. If we move over to the text tab, you can see that there's a couple of ways to configure a text area in Typo 3's core with stuff like turning wrapping off or having virtual wrapping from the browser. Um, you can trim stuff, which basically means all white space in front and at the end will be automatically uh, replaced. It'll have demos with all user functions, read-only mode. Uh, you can format things. Um, and uh, there's also a render type text table, for example, which will fire up the table editor or the table wizard 
um, that we have in typo 3. So a lot of stuff you can do right here. If we move over to the checkboxes, here you can see the different types of checkboxes that we have within typo 3's core, and we'll discuss the use of that in a detailed video later. Um, but you can see that there are different checkboxes, and these will basically um, switch state at a certain set. The interesting thing is it can be read-only, blah, 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 standard stuff. And um, we'll be adding a couple more checkboxes in the future, which have special functionality. So stay tuned for the future video. Um, same goes for radios, where you can see all the different types of radios you can add. Um, then we have the none type, which basically is just a read-only field, which makes sense if the data is being modified from outside your Type 3 installation or by some third-party service, or you want to use this for ACLs, where you want a certain group of editors to see a value, but not necessarily edit it. So you can basically have the same field and redefine it for that given user group. Um, user fields, this is, if nothing else helps in Type 3's core, <laughs> Um, and um, we're going to cover user fields in a later video so that you can see how you can register your own field types. Um, then there's flexbox things where you can have tabs in tabs, um, and it's stored in XML or JSON if everything goes according to plan in the near future. Um, and then there's a meta tab which will have publish date, language relations, etc. So that's the basic elements. Typo 3 supports. If we head over and show our page tree again into group elements, this is where things get a little bit more interesting because what you can see here is all the different types of database relations you can set up within TCA. And there's a couple of options for that. So the first field uses two different types of records that you can pull in there. You have a search box on top and it, it'll basically list the selected relations below. Next, there is the same listing, but without the records overview at the bottom, you can also remove the buttons at the bottom, but keep the record list. So there's a couple of things that you can do, or not a couple, it's a ton of things that you can do in terms of database relations. Um, just scroll through these. These are really, really helpful if you want to check out what field makes most sense for you. Um, there's the internal type file, which is obviously for file relations. Um, there's the internal type folder, so you can select folders. Useful if you want to have something like an image gallery or a listing of files to download for your users. Um, we have all the tests, how to use it in flex forms. There are request updates, which basically means that whenever something changes to one of these records, Type 3 will request a reload of the existing form and then there's the meta stuff, which is the palette, which is applied to everything else. The next important thing is rich text editors, right? So you can open up the RTE elements records in there, and you will see that you have all different configurations for RTEs right here. We will also check if records run within inline relational records. Um, in flex forms, in different sections, in palettes, basically, Style guide is our test bed to test everything we do in Type 3 score. Also very, very important are select boxes. And Type 3 offers a ton of available configuration options for select boxes. So if we open up the select element type, you can see that there's a dedicated tab for a single select that offers um, icons, images, um, a drop down with um, with empty diff elements, for example, if you want to do a segregation between uh, several options. Um, there is a select where you can select up to three options. You can also show one select box, which is expanded, which just lets um, an editor or user select a single value. And you can also use the dividers in there to segregate groups of, uh, of entries. Then we have a special type, which is technically a select box, but it looks like a, a list of stuff that you can toggle. Um, so you can see here with the toggle all option, um, you can toggle stuff with a max item uh, 
the value set so an editor can only select one value, you can put icons to that. Then we have the select multiple side by side, which is a view you might know from Typo 3, which shows a list of available options on the right side and the selected values on the left side. One thing that I wasn't aware of is that you can have exclusive items. So it means that the item foo1 and foo2 are mutually exclusive. You can select either one of them, but not both. Um, even though you can add other stuff at the bottom as well. So you can group things together. Um, there is a side-by-side -side select box where you can filter down the available items, for example. Or you can select from a list everything that starts with foo, everything that starts with bar. Very helpful. Um, then there's the select type tree, which you might know from categories, for example. Um, and again, we have all these things tested in flex forms, also with the request update setting. So when you update a field, it will trigger a reload. Very, very helpful. Next up, we got all special elements in Type of 3's core. These are basically things that the Type of 3 core needs. So you can have a custom drop down um, with permissions. We got the exclude listing that you know from setting permissions to several records. Um, there's the explicit allow deny value, also from permissions, the special language stuff. Basically, all the special things is mostly access control related. But maybe you want to use it in your own backend module or your own record, and you can then just use these as well. Next up is the T3 editor, which is our code editor from within Type 3. This one is actually pretty straightforward you know the drill, you type stuff and you can supply code highlighting and code formatting and auto-completion even for such a field. Next up we got flex forms and you might see that a lot of the things basically repeat here. Um, flex forms store all the available data in XML in the database or in JSON soon enough um, and you can use this to create rather complex forms while still having uh, the maintainability of a proper data format underneath. We're not going to dive into every single element because you can, you can basically reuse any input field from form engine, even in flex forms. Next up is IRA, Inline Relational Record Editing. And what this does, it opens up entire new records within a given record. So if we take a look at this, we can see we're in a record right here, and we can now create a new child record immediately underneath that. And IRA is pretty, pretty powerful, and this is why we have so many pages and records demoing the things, um, because you can have stuff like a record or a child record only showing up once, for example, or multiple times. So if we take a look at the one-by-one one relation, you can see there's already a record here, and this record is fully fledged. And if we close this and create a new one, you can see that you can set all things that form engine offers to you it's basically a nested child record but there's more to this you can actually nest error records into each other so if we take a look at this so what we can see here is that we have our general record with a error child in it and that error child yet has another child record in that so you can nest it pretty deep keep in mind though the more you nest the harder it will be for your editors to fully grasp what's going on so use it with caution. I don't want to bore you with all the things TCA does. One important thing I want to share with you is though that this is all functional, right? It's an actual integration into Type 3. So what you can do is you can open up your code editor, which is PHP Storm in my case, and head over to the Type 3 conf x directory and there's uh, the extension style guide that we are using all the time in this demo. And there's the configuration part of the configuration folder and you can see that these are all the records and all the all the record types that you can use with StyleGuide that we just demoed in the video. So whenever you find something in StyleGuide that you like and think, hey, this is something I could use for my project, there's the TCA definition right here and you can just copy it over and use it in your own projects. So. These files tend to be pretty long, 
And this is also why we have all the labels in the backend, like input underscore one, input underscore 30. So you can basically find them here within the TCA definition fast and don't have to find the label, then try to figure out which field it actually is. So this is extremely helpful. So whenever you think TCA got something going for you, go to style guide, check it out, and take a look at the TCA code that's right here at your fingertips. And that's it for the video. As usual, if you have any comments, suggestions, leave them in the box below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.